this is a really uh, important topic for everyone. And um, Senator Brown has uh, been, um, I think, very, I'll say, attentive to this whole area of the state and this campus in particular, and has been uh, a real friend for the uh, university. A uh, couple of points I wanted to make here. One is that he is the first uh, senator uh, on the Ag Committee in, uh, from Ohio in 40-some years. So that's a, that's a real feather in your cap and in our cap now, so we're, we're happy to have that. Um, he also chairs the Agriculture Subcommittee on Jobs, Rural Economic Development, and Energy Innovation. So those are all topics that fit very, very well with um, the research and education enterprise that we, that we have here. And uh, I think one of the comments I wanted to make, Senator, was um, a lot of the discussion on the Farm Bill um, uh, surrounds what happens at the ground level, and it should, you know, at the, at the farm and in the agricultural production arena. But a lot of what the Farm Bill does impacts this uh, very uh, institution and this, this uh, uh, site right here because so much of the funding that we get to do research emanates from USDA, uh, NIFA, the National Institute for Food and Agriculture. So the competitive grants that we apply for come through that, through that line. And so anytime that line is under fire, we're under fire because our, our dollars from the state and from the, uh, the hatch dollars provide the infrastructure. So they provide, and that's so with our faculty and students and staff here, that they provide dollars for those folks, but once once they've um, sat down in their chair and started to think about research um, and education, uh, now they need to go out and find external dollars. And one of those sources, a major source, the, the primary source, is the USDA NIFA agency and the and the uh, competitive grants that, that are provided there. So fully half of our research portfolio depends on, on those grants and, and therefore depends on the Farm Bill. So it's a very important uh, topic for us. It's one that impacts us as an organization. It's one that impacts this community because the dollars that come in here also flow back into the community as we purchase goods and services and interact with uh, various companies and so on and in the Worcester area in the region and, and across the whole state. So this is a very important topic for us, and um, so we're excited to have you. Win. I mean, it's always it's always good to hear. I mean, I, I help local operations, whether it's the ARDC or somebody else, to you know help them with federal money. There's our, our new marks anymore, but when it just always does my heart good to hear when you win these in competitive grants, and I know that um, that tells me so much about your skills and your talents and and the work that you do generally here and the reputation that this state that, that you have had in Worcester for so, so, so many years. And you know, the USDA obviously recognizes that. Whenever I speak to Secretary Vilsack, as I did repeatedly after the, after the, the four years ago disaster, um, I mean, he, he's always clearly recognized you know, how, how important this is, not just to Ohio, but to the country. So thank you for that. Um, I, I'm spending the next few days when we're, we go back to session on, on Monday night uh, in Washington. We've been off for a week. and I. Um, one of the things I'm doing is going around the state building support for the Farm Bill. Um, I'm speaking to the Farm Bill, the Farm Bureau tomorrow. They've been a major supporter. The farm groups, unlike on some issues, I mean, the Farm Bureau, Farmers Union, sometimes differ on significant issues, um, but the entire farm community is, is pretty much behind this, whether they're the corn growers or um, the Mid Ohio Food Bank, or whether it's um, any other kinds of ag, ag related, nutrition related organizations, are pretty strongly supporting this Farm Bill because farm groups and agribusiness and general agriculture in this country realizes that you know, this is not just an, an ag bill, it's a, it's a rural development bill, it's an agricultural research bill, it's a conservation bill, it's an energy bill, it's a food bill, it's all of these things. And, and I like to say that one of the reasons I, I got on the Ag Committee and, um, it, it is, I, it, I guess, well, seven years ago when I came to the Senate, as Dr. Ragland said, the first 40 years in Ohio, to sit on the, ag, on the Senate Ag Committee was because one out of seven jobs in Ohio were dependent on food and agriculture. And so um, it still is the biggest industry in our state. I mean, auto is important, chemicals are important, solar is even important in Toledo and other areas. But what ag does is uh, will always be a, a major economic driver of our state, bar none. It's just so clear. 
Um, let me talk a little bit about the Farm Bill, and then I'd be glad to take questions if anybody has any, or just hear comments from you that can educate you more about what you're doing and the role we can play here. Um, the, 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 the Ag Bill is, I'll give, give you a little bit of an update. The Senate passed the Farm Bill uh, a year ago and then last fall, so 15 or 16 months ago and then last fall passed a farm bill bipartisan with a strong bipartisan with a strong vote from both parties sent it to the house the house didn't couldn't pass anything a year ago then this year they divided into two pieces nutrition and other things um, basically nutrition and then everything else um, passed it uh, made major major snap cuts unacceptable snap cuts in my mind unacceptable snap cuts for most of the ag community that are pushing for this bill um, in times of a number of people struggling people that are disabled, people that are seniors, people who are working nine or ten dollar an hour jobs or are getting food stamps and need them. People who work at Walmart are eligible for food stamps, as you know, so um, that's got to be a major component of this bill. That's one of the differences in the House and Senate, but the Senate, conservatives and liberal members of the Senate alike, overwhelmingly voted for this bill. And um, it, it, it has two, it, it does a number of things. One of the most important things it did was a provision written by Senator Thune, a Republican from South Dakota, and me. Um, dealing with eliminating, ending, ending the so-called direct payments, what the public knows as farm subsidies, um, to the tune of billions of dollars, uh, mostly going to farmers that don't need them, um, having little to do with um, risk, having little to do with um, a safety net for farmers. Uh, we took several of those billion dollars, um, put it into the federal deficit reduction or, or in other kinds of programs, but a few billion we put into the farm to the to the safety net to crop and just uh, putting assistance into crop insurance. And in our view is that based on the commodities title of, of the farm bill is that that farmers, you know, most farmers don't don't need nor should get subsidies except they should get assistance when crop prices um, are persistently low or natural disasters um, have caused or some other cause of of um, particularly low yields. That's when, you know, when we had the drought a couple of years ago, um, corn was, instead of 180 bushels an acre, it was down in some areas to 50 or 60. Soybean was down to uh, 80 or 40, whatever the numbers were. I can't remember from a couple of years ago. Because of the drought, things came back by and large, but, but that's, when, that's when crop insurance is important, and that's why we need to keep that, that basically farm safety net. So um, the points of contention are how we do that, and um, how much we, well, what, what the Senate cut $4 billion from SNAP, the House wants to cut $40 billion. Um, we, we're not going to just split the difference. That's frankly, to me, um, far too harsh. Um, and people who, who need, who, who have already, already actually um, undergone an $11 billion cut over, over five years um, in food stamps. So um, that's what we're trying to work out in conference committee. I'm on the conference committee, Senator Stabano. Senator Cochran are pushing for the Senate bill. Um, people in the House are sort of mixed on kind of what, what they are asking for, what they want. Um, we hope to do it in the next two weeks. If we don't do it, when we go back the next two weeks, then uh, it will be pushed over to next year um, with some sort of continuing, um, some sort of continuation of farm programs. Now, I don't think that's a good way to do it. I, I hate the term kick the can down the road, but because I hear it so much. But, that's, um, that's pretty clearly what would happen if we can't get this bill done. So um, I think, I, mean, I, I know that the, 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 because the farm groups and the people that really understand agriculture are pushing for this, I'm hopeful that, that we will see progress in the, in the, next, um, the next couple of weeks. Um, the, the one of the things that I, I, what I try to do in, in, in this job is to, to meet with groups, often smaller than this, 15 or 20 people I did, maybe two dozen of these around the state, both in the Farm Bill in 07 and the renewal in 12, leading up to the, the, this bill, um, and just listened to farmers and did one in Ohio State Economist, but mostly listened to farmers all over the state. And that's where we got the idea to do the, to, to, to end the direct payments and put the money into, and partly into crop insurance. But one of the things that also came about it, I, as I hear stories, I hear stories, there was a farmer uh, from Armstrong Farms in South Charleston, Ohio, it's on Clark County, south of Springfield, um, told me there's a huge void between development, commercial development and commercialization of Ohio farmers. And he was talking about um, what we need to do with bio-based manufacturing. 130 bio-based manufacturers in Ohio, research here, research in Columbus and other places around the state. 
it made a big difference in what we can produce in this state from, you know, from soybeans especially, but from other kinds of agricultural products. Um, the, the, uh, the, 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 they, there's no question they create jobs and new markets for farmers and manufacturing. Um, I've got a provision of how, what, you know, grow it here, make it here. Um, Ohio is a number three manufacturing state in the country. Only California and Texas states twice and three times our population make more products, higher, more value than we do. So we're third in the country, and you know, we're the seventh biggest mm -hmm. state, the third in manufacturing. Um, that's why pulling together, sort of grow it here, make it here, agriculture and manufacturing will make our state even stronger economically uh, in, a, in a long term sort of way. The, the legislation which we wrote coming out of those town, those, those round tables, working with a lot of farm groups, um, was incorporated by and large, not exactly word for word, but mostly in the farm bill. We expect there's not a lot of division between the two houses on those provisions, so we expect that to be included. Um, it, would, it would do everything from strengthening the existing program that certifies and labels products so consumers <coughs> know these are bio-based. Um, it helps manufacturers um, get access to loan of loan guarantees, loan assistance. Um, it helps bridge the gap between development and commercialization. That's what you hear the most when you develop something, how do we commercialize it, whether it's medical research or whether it's, um, whether it's bio-based uh, kind of research. So that will all be part of the farm bill as we move forward. Um, and it, it will, you know, again, it'll help Ohio manufacturing, it'll help Ohio agriculture, it should make a difference for all of us. So I just make a plea to you that, um, you know, to talk, talk to your members of Congress uh, in the next um, <coughs> week or two email about the importance of this. I, I don't know if, if under House, under, I think you can, and your public employees, but you obviously can speak your mind why this matters to you um, and why it matters to your research or to your job or to um, agriculture generally, your interest in this. But I, I ask you to, um, to do whatever you can to help push some of my colleagues in both parties to support the Ag Bill, get it to the President. I know he'll sign it. He's already pretty much said he'll sign the bill roughly the way the Senate version looks. Um, and I think that, um, you know, I don't think there's much doubt that we, if we have a bill close to that, we will get a, a strong majority of both houses to pass it. So um, I'll stop there again. Thanks for hosting this. And um, any questions or comments? I'd